Welcome to the speech that I'll be giving on libertarianism. What I'll be doing is four different things. First, I will go over what libertarian theory is. Then I will discuss common misconceptions and fallacies that people have with regard to libertarianism. Then, perhaps most interesting, I will discuss several libertarian controversies where libertarians are hammer and tongs with each other, fighting, debating, divisive. That's the most fun. And then, last but not least, if I have time, and you behave yourself and don't ask me too many questions, I will be able to get into what I call advanced libertarian theory. The reason I want to do this is because I think we have a disparate group among libertarians. Some people are newcomers, some people are experts, so here, hopefully, there'll be something for everyone. So what is libertarianism? Libertarianism is the view that we should keep our myths to ourselves. We should not engage in murder, rape, theft, fraud, what have you. We should adhere to the libertarian axiom of non-aggression against non-aggressors. That's the first premise. The second premise is property rights. And you need property rights. You just can't have the first axiom on its own. Because suppose I go out into the audience and grab, what's your name? What's your name? Stark. Yes. What's your name? Uh, Stark. Stark. Yeah. Suppose I go out and I grab Stark's wristwatch. Well, am I, cre am I uh, initiating violence against him or not? It depends upon whether it's his wristwatch or not. If it's his, I am. But on the other hand, if he stole it from me yesterday, then it's not violence, it's rather return of stolen property. So we have to have a theory of property rights, and the theory of property rights that libertarians have is that it's predicated first of, of, of all upon self-ownership. We all own ourselves. Secondly, we get to own those parts of nature that we mix our labor with, that we homestead. And then other ways of defending property or having just property would be uh, what Robert Nozick calls uh, legitimate title transfer. What's legitimate title transfer? Any voluntary interaction that people have with each other where they transfer property. So, for example, I might grow wheat. You might have domesticated a cow. You have milk. I have wheat. Now we trade. So I now own the milk even though I didn't produce it, and you now own the wheat even though you didn't produce that but we can trace it back to a legitimate title transfer from a legitimate title in the first place. Other ways of transferring property beside trade would be gifts, gambling, contracts, what have you, inheritance. Those are th the different ways. Okay, now there are three areas on the basis of which we can judge libertarianism or any political philosophy. All political philosophies have to have an answer or have to have examined these three areas. First is foreign policy. Well, the libertarian view on foreign policy consistent with non-aggression is non-invasion, non-imperialism. We favor defense, a strong defense, but we don't favor going to other countries to fix them up for their own good or for our good or for anyone's good. The idea is just as individuals have to keep our mitts to ourselves and off of other people's necks and their property, so too does the U.S. government have to keep itself away from other people and their property. The second one is economics. We all have to have a view on economics. And the view of libertarianism on economics is laissez-faire capitalism because, wait for it, that's the only economic system compatible with the non-aggression axiom. And not only is laissez-faire capitalism compatible with the non-aggression axiom, it also is very beneficial. It's why certain countries are rich and other countries are poor. Adam Smith wrote this wonderful book, The Wealth of Nations, and he determined, he found out that the, if you want to be wealthy, you have private property and trade because all trade is mutually beneficial. If I trade you my uh, tie for your pen, it must be that your pen is more valuable to me than my tie. So I gain the difference in the value between the pen and the tie. On the other hand, if you want this tie, 
for the pen. You must rank the tie higher than the pen, otherwise you wouldn't be willing to trade me for it. You gain the difference between the value of these two things to you. Trade is mutually beneficial. And since all the market consists of is trade, buying, selling, renting, employing, the market is mutually beneficial. And any other system which denies this of necessity must be worse in terms of producing human welfare because now it's coercion. Now if I just grab your, your, your eyeglasses there, uh, I might benefit but you lose. So we can't determine that there's mutual benefit in that way. Uh, let me give you an example of this. Two examples. One is the FDA and thalidomide. Now the FDA approved of thalidomide. And thalidomide was a very good drug for morning sickness. Women who were pregnant who had it uh, didn't have morning sickness. Unfortunately, nine months later, they had birth defects. The FDA uh, didn't disapprove of it. The uh, German FDA did approve of it. Uh, as a result, we had m mishaps. Well, my analysis of that is, well, that's the human condition. There's always error. That's why they put erasers on the back of pencils. To err is to be human, or to be human is to err. So there'll always be mistakes. But when there are mistakes, the benefit of the capitalist system is that the people who make the mistakes go broke. The bad thing here is not that the FDA created misery. It's that they were back at the same lemonade stand after they did that. So there's no continual improvement in certification of medicines. Another example <clears throat> is the situation that occurred in New Orleans, my hometown, in the aftermath of Katrina. The FEMA and the Army Corps of Engineers, in my view, were responsible for some 1,100 deaths, which isn't so bad. Again, you know, there's always mistakes. The problem, though, is that FEMA and the Army Corps of Engineers continued to be in existence. That's the real problem, that you can't get rid of inefficiency through bankruptcy, and the reason that we have pretty good pizza and pretty good ties and pretty good wristwatches is that anyone incapable of making pretty good ones goes bankrupt. So the remainder are pretty good. The third one is personal rights, personal liberties. Should we legalize drugs? Heroin, marijuana? Yes, for adults. We should treat them roughly as we treat alcohol because if I inject some crap into my veins, and I regard heroin as very bad, but if I do, have I violated anyone's rights? Have I initiated violence against anyone? Have I violated the libertarian axiom of non-aggression? No, I haven't. Therefore, I should be allowed to do it. Doesn't mean it's good. I don't favor doing it. I'm opposed to doing it. But the question is, should I be put in jail for non-invasive behavior? And libertarians say no. What about the Godzilla pill or the werewolf pill? You take the pill and all of a sudden you grow whiskers or something and you grow fangs and your ears get pointier and you start snarling and you're about to attack people. Should the law prevent ingesting the Godzilla or the werewolf pill? Well, I go pretty far down this direction and I say no. Because merely taking a pill is not per se invasive. Now, you might get invasive three minutes after, and the police should be uh, following people who take these pills, so as soon as they make the first clawing, biting, you know, kind of move, then they should plug them, because they're a danger. But the pill itself is not per se an invasion of the libertarian axiom, and we're using the libertarian axiom as our litmus test of what's right and what's wrong, what should be legal and what should not be. Okay, I've pretty much given you a five-minute version of what libertarianism is. It's an introduction. I could say, I could speak for hours on this, but instead of going there, what I am now going to do is to consider a whole bunch of fallacies. People misinterpret libertarianism in various ways. First, atheism. For some reason, people think that if you're a libertarian, you have to be an atheist has nothing to do with libertarianism. I mean, you can believe in God, you can be a, a theist, an atheist, an agnostic, whatever you want to be, because you're not violating the libertarian axiom. Now, if you start killing people because they're not in your religion, well, then we have a problem, not because of the religion, but because of the uh, killing people. Why do people think newcomers...